Shalom. Kolemla Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Bahashem Rukwakadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad. Double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson. Stay alert, stay alive. So I just wanted to have a brief conversation about the incident that occurred yesterday. And the amazing thing is I was in the spirit talking about how the enchantment and the disillusion that's occurring here in the daughter Babylon is starting to fail. It's getting weak. And it no longer has the potency or effectiveness to lure or move the crowd. And there's a few comments that I wanted to make about this. And it concerns security. The first thing is when you have a personal security detachment and you come on the fire like this, their job is to get you immediately out of the kill zone. There ain't no time to be standing here for a photo shoot with a fist pumped up. They're going to subdue you and drag you off forcefully. And you're not going to be able to give commands, you know, and like what occurred here. Wait a minute, let me get my shoes. And then he told them to stop. He said, wait a minute. And then a photo opportunity right here, a photo op. And when you're in a dangerous situation, once gunfire breaks out, you're not given any commands when you are the incumbent or the high-ranking official. Your security detail takes charge. You're not given any orders at that point. They're going to cover you up and immediately take you out forcefully. Quick, fast, and in a hurry or fast and furious. You're not going to stay in the kill zone, and in this case, be in the center stage, and just stand there, especially when gunshots are going off. So the way this was handled raises a lot of questions, quite a bit. And then the other thing is, I've been to a presidential rally, and that was back in 2000. I think it was 2003 or four. It was a uh, Bush rally. And I was uh, still active duty military at that time. Every major route or road going into that area is sealed off or blocked. So about three miles away from where the, where the president spoke, and it was President Bush, you, we had to walk. So we got bussed in to a certain point, which was a security gate, and we had to get screened. And then that was the first layer, and then there was another layer of security where we had to get screened. But from where you park and to where the speaker is going to speak, we, I think we walked about a mile. So there's no way any rifle positions can be set up. Every rooftop is covered by security detail agents dressed in black, wearing body armor and armed to the teeth. So there's about a three to five mile radius where you can't get in. It's all blocked off, which is very important because you're outside of the range of high powered rifles. They can't even reach that position, not to mention all of the roads around that five to six mile radius are blocked off. So you can't even travel in and around where the speaker is. 
and every roof is covered with security. So we got bust in to a certain point, and then we had to walk about a mile after that bus got checked and screened through security. Everybody had to get off and get screened. Anyway, I'm not going to make this long. I'm going to read this prayer for rescue from enemies. Let's go to Psalms 35 and 1. A psalm of David, plead my cause, O Lord, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. So believe it or not, the Lord has his men on the scene right now. And he's fighting for us through the spiritual battle that we are engaged in. That's occurring right now. But that's going to turn physical. Take hold of shield and buckler and stand up for my help. This is beautiful. So we have an advocate. We have a military. We might not be able to count them physically, but we can feel the strength of the council of angels that are encamped round about us. We can feel it. That's what empowers us with boldness when we're out on the street speaking. Remember, the Holy Spirit is a council of angels. <clears throat> Psalms 35 and 3. And this is heavy right here. Draw out also the spear and stop the way against them that persecute me. Say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. So we have hope of being delivered through Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Let's look up this word spear. So the Lord is going to lift up a standard against our enemies. The Lord pleads with judgment. He's not going to be begging anybody to change. He pleads with judgment. Let's look up this word spear. <clears throat> spear looks like Kayanaf. Kayan, Kayan, Kayan. I'm gonna take my time. Kanayaf. Kanayaf. Which is a lance for thrusting. A lance for thrusting. So the Lord is going to do this in the form of fire. He's going to cause these nuclear spears to be shot off. That's what's going to occur in our time. Let's keep going. Psalms 35. One moment. Psalms 35, I want to go to a certain point. Yeah, I went too far now. Let's go back to three. Draw out also the spear and stop the way against them that persecute me, saying to my soul, I am thy salvation. Let them be confounded and put to shame that seek after my soul. Let them be turned back and brought to confusion that devise my hurt. So the wicked are plotting against the just. Remember, King David prayed that the council, I think it was Abimelech, be confounded. <clears throat> Let's look this up. I want to make, it, to make sure my facts are straight here. We'll pull it up this way. To confound their counsel. 
So the elect are doing this right now so that the wicked global elite council gets get confounded. Yeah, that's what it is. Ahithophel. So it's Second Samuel 15 and 31. I'll go ahead and pull that up. The elect is doing this through prayer on the right hand side. Second Samuel 15 and 31. Let's go ahead and pull that up right here. Yeah, when Absalom was conspiring against him. And uh, Ahithophel, Ahithophel, let's read this. 2 Samuel 15 and 31. And one told David, saying, Ahithophel is among the conspirators with Absalom. And David said, O Lord, I pray thee, turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. So this is happening again. The house of David is praying curses against the daughter of Babylon to confound their wise counsel, to confound or confuse them. <clears throat> so this was Absalom's conspiracy against his father, David. And King David prayed that their counsel gets confused or confounded. So this is happening through the Spirit as we speak right now. Curses on the right-hand side are being prayed up. And we can do that in righteousness. There's nothing wrong with doing that. One of my childhood favorites was growing up watching Star Wars. Notice the um, the tasers or the phasers, whatever the swords were called. I think they were called phasers. One would be red, one would be blue. Red represents the wicked or Esau, Edom. Red, blue represents Jacob or the righteous. And in this time frame, the Lord's elect. They would always clash once one against another. But ultimately, the blue or the righteous will always win. Reminds me of that song by Bob Marley. Good over evil. There's a natural mystic blowing. Anyway, so good always overcomes evil. <clears throat> So we're praying right now that the wicked be confounded. Let's go back to Psalms 35 and 4. Let them be confounded and put to shame that seek after my soul. Let them be turned back and brought to confusion that devise my hurt. This is a curse on the right-hand side. When we pray, and acts in faith that this occurs. And the Lord is with his saints. And their prayer pierces through the clouds. So he hears the prayer of his elect. Psalms 35 and 5. Let them be as chaff before the wind. And let the angel of the Lord chase them. And this is beautiful because we read in verse 3 that spear. So the Lord is going to use the works of their own hands to destroy them. He that liveth by the sword shall die by the sword. So a sword is a killing instrument. Now, brother, it says spear. That's still a killing instrument. So they're going to be destroyed by the works of their own hands. Nuclear warfare. Which is going to turn them in the chaff. But then you have the so-called UFOs or the chariots of the Lord. That are going to be emitting 
high energy concentrated laser beam fire to finish off the wicked, the enemies of the Lord. Psalms 35 and 5. Let them be as chaff before the wind and let the angel of the Lord chase them. So that's Yahawashai. Yeh that's going to pursue them like a whirlwind traveling with armies of the hosts of heaven. Angels, not little green men from Mars. Let their way be dark and slippery and let the angel of the Lord persecute them. So Yahawashai destroys our enemies with tempest. Tempest is destroying destructive winds mixed with fire and, and storm. It is a terror. Is he not called the king of terror? Let's pull this up real quick. Or we just read, let's read it again. Psalms 35 and 6. Let their way be dark and slippery and let the angel of the Lord persecute them. So the Yahawashai uses the elements and weaponize rain, wind, storm, fire, rain. You see, hail. Hail is like bricks falling out of the sky. They can get as big as basketballs. See, persecute with thy tempest. <clears throat> right here. Psalms 83 and 15. So persecute them with thy tempest and make them afraid with thy storm. See, that tempest is very destructive. <clears throat> So persecute them with thy tempest and make them afraid with thy storm. Imagine a tsunami floods hitting the, hitting the uh, shores with extreme speed and force. Then on top of that, fiery darts and balls falling from the sky mixed with hail and rain and wind. Very destructive, all brought together as a dynamic force of death. <clears throat> Psalms 35 and 5. Let them be as chaff before the wind, and let the angel of the Lord chase them. Let their way be dark and slippery, and let the angel of the Lord persecute them. So most people don't fear the Lord because they got this bubbly, warm, fuzzy image in their mind of an all-loving Jesus. And no matter what we do, we're accepted. Just say Jesus. Everything's going to be okay. We have not been taught the true image and power of the king of terror at all. We just say, oh, no, that was the Old Testament God. Now we got Jesus. <laughs> I mean, you can't make this shit. You can't make this shit up. Man. <laughs> I don't mean to be facetious, but this is absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Lord, have mercy. That was the Old Testament God. Okay. You can't make this stuff up. Anyway, these are curses. Psalms 35 and 7. For without cause have they hid for me their net in a pit, which without cause they have digged for my soul. So they're setting snares up and traps. Demonization campaign. Let all these illegals in. Now say, oh, we got to digitally tag, mark, and track everybody now. Because we don't know who's who. Who's who in the zoo. So now everybody needs to be digitally linked in and satellite tracked. And in order to make purchases so we can 
maintain visibility at the federal level as to what you're spending your money on. See? So that is a net. The network link in. <clears throat> Let's go to verse 8. Let destruction come upon him at unawares. That's Yahweh Shai, the king of terror. The viper described in the Old Testament. I think it's Job 18. So he's coming as a robber or a thief in the night. Let destruction come upon him at unawares and let his net that he have hid catch himself into that very destruction. Let him fall. So this net he's using is a digital grid network, which ultimately is a slave system. You see how the scriptures come together? He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. So they're not leading anybody on carnival cruise liners now or slave ships. Now it is a digital or electronic leash system, if you will, for lack of better words. An electronic leash or house arrest with this digital crypto age and Bitcoin. You see? So now the way they're trying to lead into captivity is across cyberspace, digitally linking everyone into the B system or grid network. Let destruction come upon him at unawares and let his net that he have hid catch himself into that very destruction let him fall and my soul shall be joyful in the lord it shall rejoice in his salvation so those that are not going to be caught or trapped by the system are going to rejoice at the destruction of the daughter of babylon remember david through the spirit is prophesying the destruction of babylon when we read Psalms 137, Psalms 144, save me, deliver me from strange children. Let's jump down to verse 11. False witnesses did rise up. They laid to my charge things that I knew not. So the elect can expect persecution to be brought before governors, mayors, city council, to be falsely accused, demonized. <clears throat> Let's close out here. <clears throat> Psalms 37, verse 7. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. So we don't need to be trying to build a militia, trying to buy a damn tank on Amazon or a grenade launcher on Amazon. Are you out of your mind? Bug out. We got to rest and wait on the Lord. The Bible says the Lord will fight for us. Now Jake's taking up a collection to buy a fighter jet. Unbelievable. I'm just being facetious. That's not happening. But the bottom line is we have a defense through our faith. <clears throat> Psalms 37 and 7. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. So we are not ignorant of the devices of the wicked, their plots, their plans, their digital new age system, their new currency, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, the new tracking 
buying and purchasing system. And ultimately, the subjugation of citizens underneath this beast global system. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. So this is a spiritual battle that we are to have faith in our deliverance of what we cannot see. So there is an unseen hand that's guiding us. And we have to have faith in the right arm of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, and his right hand of justice, which essentially is through Yahweh Shai. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those for evil doers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. See, beautiful. So the elect is patiently waiting for the establishment of a new holy righteous kingdom that will never fade away. The elect believe on these promises. So we don't have to be stressed out. When we know how the story ends, we're going to see a happy ending, Lord willing. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. When we're reading this little while, it's based on the timeline of the awakening and the sealing of the elect. In this era, this age, so that is a very short window. Why you think the elite is saying that we're about 90 seconds from midnight? The last time I checked on that doomsday clock. Yeah, the doomsday clock, I believe they're saying right now about 90 seconds from midnight. So they know they have limited understanding on the left hand. So it's talking about this window of time. For yet a little while and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place and it shall not be. Let's get one to pick up on that one. So in a little while, that's why all types of scriptures are going through my head right now. It's high time to awake out of sleep. For our salvation is nearer than when we believe. And the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Where is that at? In a little while. Yeah, let's go ahead and read here. Isaiah 47. Let's go to verse 11. Now we got to read 9 first. Isaiah 47 and 9. But these two things shall come to thee in a moment. See? So through the Spirit we can discern. It's basing it on the sealing and the awakening of the elect. Quam Yasharala. That's what it's based off of. Isaiah 47 and 9. But these two things shall come to thee in a moment in one day. The loss of children and widowhood. They shall come upon thee in their perfection for the multitude of thy sorceries and for the great abundance of thine enchantments. All this man's deception and media propaganda, you know, illusions, smoke and mirror effects, being gaslighting, if you will, creating deception, deflection, and redirection. Even when you're, when this man starts to answer a question, deception, 
misdirection, redirection, or deflection. It's always gray areas with this man, Edom, Esau. He cannot approach a direct response in truth. So he's using a media platform to continue to promote confusion and deception. And don't forget the um, pharmakia. We know what that is. The elect should know what that means. Pharmakia, which breaks down into witchcraft. But in the Greek, pharmakia. So we know what that is. A lot of Americans are walking around bugged out, just totally delusional, strong delusion, likened unto a spiritual intoxication or the wine in Babylon. It's Isaiah 47, verse 10. When thou hast trusted in thy wickedness, Thou hast said, None seeth me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted thee. And thou hast said in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. No one can see what we're doing behind the scenes in our secret chambers. We are the enlightened ones and none else. We hold the secrets to the ancients and the ancient hidden wisdom, the mystery religions. We have that knowledge of black magic and deception. Therefore, shall evil come upon thee. Thou shalt not know from whence it riseth, and mischief shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off, and desolation shall come upon thee suddenly which thou shall not know. Suddenly, life has new meaning. Anyway, inside joke. You see, I love music. I love music. There's beauty up above. Anyway, see that suddenly? Suddenly. So the Lord is going to show up when we least expect him. While everybody's still chewing on Tootsie Rolls and Twizzlers and drinking the damn Diet Mellow Yellow. Bugged out. As in the days of Noah. Just carefree. Reveling. See? Suddenly. Let's pick up right here and close out. Psalms 35 and 8. Let destruction come upon him at unawares. Say what? Let destruction come upon him at unawares, and let his net that he have hid catch himself into that very destruction. Let him fall. See? This, the Lord is going to show up and show out and put an end to the dog and pony shows. The dog and pony shows, the circus events. He's getting ready to put an end to this. Here it is. You're in a kill zone and you're stopping for a photo op or a photo opportunity. All right. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, or Kadash. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yasharala and the Bad Ball. We got next, Lord willing. Barakatham. Shalom.